Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio with a Workbench Wednesday vlog. I hope you are having a great day wherever you are and whenever you happen to be watching this. Today I want to talk about a question that was sent in to me through the Thunder Mesa Studio website. And it has to do with scale, calculating scale. How do we figure this out? And well, here I'll just I'll just read it to you because it's it's a really good question. This comes from uh, Chris Ashcraft. Hello, Dave. I'm a longtime fan. I have a real quick scaling question for you. How do you calculate scale? I'm working on a project where I want to build scale models of toys to full size, i.e. Toy Story, where I'm the size of the toy. Okay, I think I'm getting this. So I want to take wood blocks or a Rubik's Cube and make them scale to me the same size as they would be to, say, a G.I. Joe figure. Any guidance would be greatly appreciated. This doesn't have to do with trains, but, you know, we're dealing with scale all the time. So this is, this is actually a really good question, because what he's asking here is, how do we figure out the scale of a thing when we don't know what it is? When you, when you buy a, a scale model like a locomotive, it says right on the box what the scale of it is. But if you buy something like, you know, an action figure or, uh, or anything else that's supposed to represent something in miniature, like, a, like a, a gaming figure or something like that, it often doesn't have the scale on it. Or, or worse, it has something that's misleading, like, say, 28 millimeter scale. You see a lot of these gaming figures that are sold that way. Oh, these are 28 millimeter scale. Well, 28 millimeter is not a scale. That's the size of the thing. It's literally 28 millimeters tall. That's not a scale. Scale in this context means the, the relative size of the miniature thing to what it would be in real life. So there's a there's a there's a ratio there. There's a there's a mathematic relationship, a, a multiplier, if you will. So just saying that something is 28 millimeter scale is not saying anything at all. You're just saying it's 28 millimeters high. You're not saying how tall it is uh, in relationship to what you know, say, a real orc would be <laughs> in real life. So in order to figure this out, you need one of two things. You need a, um, a known dimension of something, or you need to be able to assume the dimension of something. Now, Chris uses the example of a G.I. Joe in his question, and that's great because a G.I. Joe is a representation of a human being, and humans are a known quantity. For the most part, we know what size they're supposed to be. So it's probably safe to assume that a G.I. Joe is meant to represent a, at least a six-foot-tall human. Now, G.I. Joes have come in a lot of different sizes over the years. When I was a kid, G.I. Joes were 12 inches tall. But I'm going to assume that he's talking about, you know, the G.I. Joes you can get today, which are like three and three-quarter inches tall, 3.75, about the same as the Kenner... Star Wars action figures. I think they switched to that in the 80s. Anyway, so if he's 3.75 inches tall and he's representative of a six foot tall person, let's make that a little bit easier so we're not comparing inches to feet. Six feet is 72 inches. So what we need to do is divide 72 by 3.75 and that is going to give us the scale. And in this example, that number is 19.2. So the scale can be expressed as one nineteen point twoth tooth. Let's just simplify it and say one nineteenth. Close enough. And this formula works regardless of the size of something or what scale it's supposed to be. You know, say something is uh, two and a half inches tall and it's meant to represent something that's four feet tall. You take 
48 and divide it by 2.5, and that's going to give you your multiplier. That's going to give you your scale. It's just math. It works every time. So my preferred modeling scale is 148, also known as O scale. It's a quarter inch to a foot. And I arrived at that being my favorite scale through many years of trying different scales, N scale, HO, other things. But I find you get a lot of bang for your buck in O scale. Now, this is not uh, the invitation to an argument about which scale is the best. Who cares? It's whatever scale you enjoy modeling it is the best one for you. For me, it's O scale because I can pack a lot of detail into a relatively small area, and that's what I really enjoy doing. But to bring it back to our discussion about calculating scale, say I had a, a six foot tall human and I wanted to shrink them, say I scanned them and I wanted to do like a 3D print of them at in O scale. So they're six foot tall, that's 72 inches. Again, we just take that 72 and we divide it by 48 and we get 1.5, right? So they'd be an inch and a half tall. So you'd shrink them down to an inch and a half and they would be six foot tall in O scale. Easy peasy. Now I know I've been using imperial units this whole time and this whole discussion, but of course everything I've been saying here also applies if you prefer the metric system. Just substitute uh, millimeters and meters for inches and feet and you'll get the same answers. Another way to calculate this is with something that is a known dimension. Now, say, for example, you want to build a model of a historic structure that no longer exists, but you have some good photos of it, particularly good photos of like the front of the building that show the doors and things like that. Well, doors are a known dimension. Here in the United States, the standard size for a door is 80 inches tall, six and a half feet. So if you know that, you can look at that photograph and measure that door and extrapolate the size of everything else in the photo relative to the size of the door. You break the measurement of the door down into 80 units and then you can figure out what the scale of the whole thing is. And that's a trick I use all the time to scale structures from photographs. Works really well. So even when we're working with a known dimension, we're still kind of making an assumption. We're assuming that door is 80 inches tall, the same way that we're assuming that G.I. Joe is six feet tall. My point here is that, you know, no matter how you slice it, there's going to be some guesswork involved. You're just going to have to make a decision. So if you're trying to figure out how tall that 28 millimeter orc figure would be in real life, you're just going to have to decide, well, how tall is an orc? You know, maybe it'll help to put him next to a wizard. And if the wizard is six feet tall and he's the same height, then he's six feet tall too. And then you can figure it out. Then you can take that 28 millimeters and divide it up and figure out uh, what the scale is, what the multiplier would be for everything else in that world. Anyway, I hope that answers Chris's question about uh, calculating scale. And I hope it answers any questions you guys might have. If you have a better way of calculating scale or a way that you prefer to do it, I'd like to hear about it. You can put it down in the comments below. If you have a question yourself that you'd like for me to answer on one of these Workbench Wednesday vlogs, you can put that in the comments too, or you can go over to my website, thundermesa.studio, uh, click on contact and put it in the contact form there, and I will definitely see it. I want to thank you all so much for watching today. It's, it's been a pleasure talking about this. Uh, if it's your first time here, I hope you'll subscribe and hit that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when the next video is coming from Thunder Mesa Studio. It's not all math, by the way. We're just talking about math today. Most of the time, I'm just building cool stuff. But today, it was a discussion about math, so I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> if you did, you know, smash that like button, all those YouTube things. I want to send a big thank you and shout out to all of our channel members who helped to make these videos possible. You can also follow us over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and find out what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now. Mm -hmm.